Mimir the Storyteller is back in God of War Ragnarok and telling a lot more stories. You're about to see every single tale, story, quip said between Mimir, Kratos, Atreus, and then of course Mimir, Kratos, and Freya, different parts in the game. You might remember in God of War 4, there were a lot of stories like this, but not even a fraction of a fraction of the amount of stories in this game and how it all changes depending on the choices that you make. Ymir, how many stories have you told about Odin and Thor and all the bad things they've done? Let's see how many we can remember. Seems like father could use his memory refreshed. My memory of them requires no refreshment. They invaded our home. Yeah, but I'm talking about history. All the other people they've hurt. Let's see. Okay. There was Thamor, the stonemason. Aye. He quarreled with his son. Went into the night to find him. Found Thor instead. And there was Thamor's son, Grimther. Who built the walls of Asgard. And whispered something of importance to Freya before his betrayal and assassination. There was Groa, of course. The knowledge keeper and prophet of Ragnarok. Thor murdered her husband, and Odin covered it up before doing her in himself. You can't forget Amir, the first giant. Odin carved him up to form the realms from his body, and let the torrent of his blood nearly drown every giant alive. What about the giants of Jotunheim? They all seemed dead when we finally made it there. That remains a mystery. Though admittedly, it sounds like the Aesir god's dream. What about Fjorgen? Thor's mother was a giant, wasn't she? Indeed she was. The circumstances of her demise were murky at best, but not sure I can blame Odin for that one. He wasn't the same after. Oh, I know. There was Skadi, the queen of the hunt. Aye, she spurned Odin's affections, so he tricked her into killing her father. There was Starkather the Mighty, the Jotnar military leader. Slandered by Odin, tricked and murdered by Thor. And there was Thrym the Cunning, the giant king who stole Thor's hammer. Odin traded him Freya to get it back, then sent Thor in disguise to murder his entire court. Who else? Ah, Groom near the Brawler, the stone giant. Aye, mocked by Odin, murdered by Thor. Enough of this. But there's more. I do not care. War with Odin is not the answer. So not all dwarves can do that thing Brock and Sindri do, right? Or they just walk between realms and turn up somewhere else? Indeed, that's a rare skill. I gather one carefully cultivated by some secretive dwarven guild or other. Probably for the best. Them alone doing it is disconcerting enough. Mir, what's the deal with Odin's ravens? They can just transport him anywhere? Except for the realm between realms, thankfully. Why? Harder to find, thanks to dwarven enchantments and Yggdrasil's very own nature. Hmm. Lucky us. Mimir. A little while ago, you mentioned Odin's ravens. What's to stop him from using them to pop into existence and kidnap anybody he wants? Consent. The only way to travel by Odin's ravens is by your own choice. Oh, it's not so bad then. I wanted to ask you something about your blades. The ones from your homeland. What of them? Why don't you just throw them away? I see the way you look at them sometimes. Like you're... I don't know. Like you hate them. Even hateful things have their uses. Besides, I tried. They came back. Mimir, wouldn't you prefer to face forward rather than backward? We already tried. There were issues with... Viscera. Oh. And there was a brief bit where I thought I might get used to it. He did not. Brother, you ever think of cooking meat with those blades of yours? No. They would foul the meat. Oh, because of the magic on them? The blood. Ah, yes. Carry on then. Atreus, you are getting better. Faster. I'd even be better than you one day, huh? If you are not, I have failed. Oh. Uh. What is it, Mamiya? That's nothing, brother. Just... You ever have those moments where you wish you could... go back? Rewrite your own past. Make different decisions. Journey through time is more trouble than it is worth. Ah. Uh. 
Fair point. You're speaking metaphorically, right? No. Of course you're not. Father, what was Spartan training like? Unforgiving. Is that why you didn't train me like one? Did you not think I could handle it? I did not think you should have had to. Thanks. You know what? My face is itchy. I think my beard's coming in. Is it? Yeah, on my jawline. See? It's growing. Is it? Well, that's not just dirt. It's not dirt. What are these animals? Gulon, native to Vanaheim. Not sure what they're doing here. There's something I'm not sure I quite understand. In the Ragnarok prophecy Odin knows, all the realms get destroyed, including Asgard. In the version Groa kept secret, Asgard still falls. Wouldn't Odin have tried to prevent it either way? What difference did her life really make? I think of it this way. When it comes to subverting prophecy, knowledge is power. Without the full picture and context, the finer details can lead you to tragically incorrect interpretations. Back in my homeland, I was privy to the operations of a certain coven of heat witches who were keen on destabilizing the government. They picked an influential thane, an otherwise loyal man, and fed him a story of his own ascension to king. They dressed it up in enough details they knew would come to pass, so when they did, the Thane took it as confirmation. Next thing you know, he's helping matters along. He murders his king, sleeping under his own roof. Murders many he once called friends, too, thinking them fated to oppose him. Then, for a finishing touch, the witches revisit this usurper. With just a few details structured ever so misleadingly, they convinced the fool he was invulnerable to all threats. Physical or magical. magical. Aye, aye, but was not so for him. All turned into a rather magnificent bloodbath as they go. The Thane ends up without his head and a name so cursed none dare speak it. All thanks to a subtly deceptive prophecy. We really gotta write these stories down one day, ah! Well, I try. The jaw tends to get sore, but thank you, lad. Father, can we build a lyre together? The instrument. Why? We hunt, we train. Those are the only two things you do to distract yourself. They are not distractions. Oh, of course not. I just thought it'd be nice to learn some music. You could teach me, and... No, it's stupid. Never mind. Why do you yawn? Force of habit, I suppose, since I don't sleep anymore. Although, it's far more confounding that I'm the tired one. I've seen you stay awake for days at a time without so much as a drooping eyelid. Not even a nap. Gods do not nap. Oh, tell that to Thor. Hey, Mimir. Between me and Tyr, who'd ever guess I was the giant, huh? Ha, indeed, lad. Mimir, do you understand these poems? Oh, there's always meaning if you look hard enough, brother. It's all in what you bring to it. So you just refuse to pick a favorite poem. That's uncharacteristically indecisive of you. I have a favorite poem already. One from my homeland. <laughs> Come on, brother. Let's have it. You mentioned you had a favorite poem from your homeland. What was it about? A cunning general. A war over forbidden love. I believe I've heard of this one. Did it involve a horse that was not as it appeared? Yes, but that is not what happened. Oh, it's based on truth then. And you were there. Yes. Oh. Claire, when will I look like you? In what way? Like, figure. When do I get muscles like yours? When you work for them. But Baldur was really strong, and he didn't have any muscles. My strength does not come from my body. 
but both are honed by discipline. What's that mean? It means you've got the strength of a god no matter what, lad. But if you want the physique of one, you'd better start picking heavy things up and putting them back down. <sighs> Brother, in my travels, I heard of a great battle in your homeland, at a place called the Gates of Fire. The Hard Gates. You are there? No. Is that regret in your voice? I did regret not dying there for many years, but no longer. Did I ever tell the two of you how I made a small fortune in Asgard? <laughs> Once, Boulder arranged for every archer in the city to open fire on him. We took bets on how many arrows could be lodged in his body until the sheer weight of them made him fall down. Ha! That's awful. Oh, no, no. He was laughing the whole time. And mine was the closest guess. 446 arrows exactly. That's horrible. You better not tell that story in front of Freya. Yes, lad. Because I've suddenly taken leave of my senses. Just saying. Sort of a harp. I can play beautifully, you know. I do not. I would prefer it remain that way. Well, you two seem to be getting on since completing your mission. Dare I hope this alliance has some staying power after all? It seems to me we share a common enemy. Kratos, you may not accept that Ragnarok is inevitable, but you're smart enough to know Odin is a threat. Whatever comes next, our best chance of surviving it is to work together. Do you agree? I do. Then as to Brock's offer, you can imagine staying under the same roof as a couple former enemies? No further temptations towards terrible vengeance? Not against you. Either of you. You have my word. So it's true. Tears really alive? Aye. Not exactly ship shape. He sleeps in a broom closet now. But he's adjusting. How did you find him? Largely, that's down to Atreus having figured out how to access the prophecies giants reserved for their own kind. We only learned of it ourselves after Thor and Odin came calling. To your home? Is it still standing? Barely. But all the violence was seemingly just a distraction to let Odin have a private word with Atreus. Odin was alone with your son? Did he tell you what they spoke of? Yes. He said that Odin invited him to Asgard to help him find his answers. The answer is he's rushing into fate in search of. That's troubling. Well, if you're ready to talk to him, the Mystic Gateway is ahead. If not, I have some unfinished business up this river I could use your help with. Or we can follow up on that elven sanctum out in Alfheim's desert. What is your unfinished business? I left something behind, near the falls. Your wedding site? Now, why do you want to be going back there? To be free of the bonds of my marriage. And to Asgard. I think you severed that a long time ago. Not completely. Not enough. Guide us. My people settled this river many ages ago. Thousands traveled it on pilgrimage to the Shrine of Worship. But then the Aesir came. This is all that's left. Freya, something your brother said. The ace here burned him. Yes. We weren't yet at war, but relations with the Vanir and Aesir had been hostile for ages. Freyr got it into his head that he could improve relations by sharing our magic with them. Vanir techniques for bountiful harvests, enough to feed their whole population. Getting set on fire was the thanks he got. That's true. The Aesir were too undisciplined and impatient for the subtlety of Vanir spellcraft. So when things went wrong, they blamed their teacher. So Freya was a guest when Odin burned him? Not exactly. Odin didn't mind locking Freya up. He saw the potential of the magic and wanted to know more than how to improve crop yields. It was a mob of lesser Aesir, bitter and short-sighted, who tied him up and lit him aflame as punishment for the sabotage they imagined him guilty of. Obviously, he survived. In fact, he used the opportunity to escape. But such an affront made war inevitable. Freyr certainly wasn't the same after that. At least for a while. His carefree ways were replaced with nightmares, 
paranoia and lashing out. It doesn't excuse what he said at my wedding, but I do understand where his anger came from. Well, lady, I was curious about some of the flora we'd encountered on our travels. And you will remain curious. It's not my job to teach you everything, Mimir. Look, I was just asking. And you have been told. Oh, you can say that again. Hiya, Freya. How you doing? I'm fine. On that, madam, we are agreed. What? Oh. Oh, uh... Thank you? Any time. Ha! <laughs> Lunga! You ain't changed one damn bit. <laughs> you know, I would have beaten you. What? Earlier. If Atreus hadn't been there. Hmm. Perhaps. We could go again. Find out for certain. I would rather not. I'll bet you wouldn't. Ugh. The closer we get, the more tightness grows in my chest. You're sure you want to continue? Confronting the past comes with a price. It must be done. I've lived with this pain far too long. If you can believe it. We were happy once. For a time, I foolishly believed the peace would last. Perhaps that was my mistake. All I wanted was to protect my family. There is no shame in that. I fail all the same. You know, an arrogant man once told me you can't change the past, only how it shapes you. I think he might be right. It's been a while since I've had a confidence. Would the god of few words lend me his ear now and again? As long as I am needed. Despite his actions in Midgard, Atreus does still care for you. I know. I raised a son, too. It may be hard to believe, but he was quite similar to Atreus at this age. He adored his father, always wanted to do right by him, and was constantly frustrated that no matter what he did, he never could seem to get his approval. He confided in me a lot, sought the comfort his father withheld. I wonder if your son could benefit from that, too. He has befriended the other dwarf. The Blue One's brother. Oh. Well, if Sindri has that covered, I suppose there's no need for me in his life anymore, is there? That is not what I meant. That was sarcasm. Mimir, I never asked how it felt to lose your head. What would you have me say? That it tickled? Merely curious. If you wish to derive some satisfaction from my pain, I'm afraid you'll be disappointed. Kratos swung swift and true, didn't you, brother? I felt nearly a scratch. Shame. Freya, there's something I've always wanted to ask. What was it Hrimthur whispered to you? Who? Hrimthur, the son of Thormur, the stonemason, who disguised himself and built Asgard's wall. Oh, yes. One of the many occasions Odin saw fit to involve me in a wager without my consent. I wish I could say that was the worst of his husbandly habits. What wager? I've told this story, brother. And now she may tell her own. There isn't that much to tell. I knew nothing of it at first, surely because Odin didn't expect to lose the bet. A mysterious mason had to build the entire wall in three turns of the season. Two! It was two! And if he was late, he'd be owed nothing. But if he succeeded, he was promised an audience with the Queen. Or so I learned one day when Odin burst into our bedchambers, raging and half-drunk before noon, telling me to get dressed and go see what the mason wants. So, off I went, not knowing what had truly been promised or expected. Dagger stashed in my robe for emergency. And this mason, this giant in disguise... His name was Hrimthur! He just smiled to see me. And as you said, he whispered in my ear. He said the Aesir had killed his father, and he needed to know that one day they'd burn for it. I pointed out I was Aesir now too, technically. He gave me a look, as if he somehow knew better and continued. 
He said he'd built in a structural flaw behind the Asgard Realm Tower. I knew it! How do we make use of it? We don't. He said Surtur would know what to do. And if Surtur's approaching Asgard's wall... Then it is already Ragnarok. Aye. Blast it! I hoped it might have given us another way. Do you regret it, Mimir? Most likely. Uh, what are we talking about in particular? Giving up your body? I regret exchanging my life for my freedom? That's a question I ask myself every day, my lady. What about today? Today? Glad to be out in the world. How else could I spend such quality time with you? <laughs> okay, okay. Kratos, tell me of an adversary from your homeland. It will serve us well if I understand more of your battle tactics. Mm -hmm. There was Medusa, queen of the Gorgons. Her gaze turned men to stone. A mirror would turn her own powers against her. Or you may remove her head, but that is the hard way. Which did you choose? The hard way. Forget I asked. Freya, you once revived a giant's corpse to a... Uh, stop a certain fight we won't talk about. Could you call on that power again? Maybe. Do you have a massive giant's corpse for me to revive? Uh, no. Well, there you go. Are we off to find that elven sanctum then, or something else? We certainly can. Though we do have something else that needs our attention. We found a Hofgufa out in the Barrens, my lady. In terrible pain. We freed it, but there's another in town somewhere beneath the Forbidden Sands. A Hofgufa? I haven't seen one since I was a child. And what else? There's still that secret elven library in Alfheim. Lead the way. Freya, I've always wondered. Why was Freya so revered here so quickly upon his first arrival? Well, to begin with, it wasn't his first arrival. Very few know this, but Freya was one of the earliest visitors to Alfheim, back in the dawn of realm travel. Oh? A bit before my time. Do tell. We believed for a long time that all the giants had died in the Flood, until one of them appeared in Vanaheim. Her name was Gerv. And she came offering to teach us the secrets of traveling between realms using Bifrost Light. Freyr became immediately infatuated with her. He always yearned to wander, and along came someone who could truly show him how. So, wander they did, exploring the world tree from root to branch. But one day, it came time for Gerd to wander away. Freyr was heartbroken and resolved himself to perform some great feat to win her back. He set his aim on the grandest of gestures. He intended to be the first to find the elusive source of Bifrost light. And he succeeded, although quite by accident. Freyer believed he navigated best while fortified by a potent blend of Vanir herbs. When he wandered, he wandered. And he managed to wander from the World Tree directly into the Lake of Souls. The elves have never seen anybody come out of the lake before, so it got some attention. Oh, that is bloody hilarious. I don't know whether he worked his charms at that point or they just assumed him to be a great deity. But of course, he hadn't made this journey in search of responsibility, so he didn't stick around long. Still, the legend of his manifestation was passed along through the ages. It even endured after the Great Division, remembered by light and dark elf alike. So when at last he returned, he was uniquely situated to gain the trust of both sides and help to create a truce. The problem was, both sides trusted only him. So the peace could only last as long as he stayed around to keep it. And with the long war dragging on without an end in sight, I suppose making any kind of peace was an irresistible notion for him, even if it meant having to rule. <laughs> Much of the sand has been cleared away, but another storm rages beyond that pass, which must mean... Another half -gufa. <laughs> Oh. 
It looks as though the Light Elves sealed off this section of the Baron. Why? Luckily for us, a very considerate goddess has enhanced our magic chisel, and we can unseal it. My, that is lucky. The Forbidden Sands lay beyond. Contested territory, according to Bela. And another storm to endure. I remember when Freyr and I traveled to this realm as children. The desert was healthy and full of life back then. I can't help but fear that era has ended for good and our efforts here are futile. It's a fair concern. Healing this land will take more than a pair of singing half -gifa. But I have to believe in the long run, we're doing right by Alfheim. I hope Freyr will appreciate our work here in the desert. I wonder if he knows how poorly this realm has fared in his absence. Aye. Hearing the Song of the Sands again is a rare privilege, even if it's only a solo act. Or a duet, once this Hothgufa is free. When I last came here with you and Atreus, I assumed the absence of Alfheim's light was an aberration. I didn't realize it was covered by five matter. Aye, and as far as the Dark Elves are concerned, it's that light column in the center of the temple that's the aberration. Just look at how old some of these surfaces are. Far older than the light well, or even our trapped half for that matter. That's quite the empathetic perspective, Mimir. Well, dangle from a burly god's backside for a few winters, and you'll find yourself looking for all sorts of new perspectives. Light Elves don't often travel underneath the Barrens, do they? Territory changes hands often in Nalfheim, or so it appears. Big VR did mention that these ruins have historical significance for the Light Elves. I assume they're only here to keep intruders out. Well, at least they tried. I hope freeing these Hawkufas will allow them to breed again. It was a dazzling display once. The skies of Alfheim filled with their song. I imagine it's the lack of fresh light that's caused this pair to grow abnormally large. No use in having babies if there's nothing for them to feed on. Trying to protect their children from the harsh world. I can relate. <laughs> I wonder if these two comprehend the choice they face once free. What choice do you speak of? The life cycle of the Hafgufa. In order to breed, they must pass on their light to their children. And without light, they will die. I suppose that's all any of us can hope for in the end. That our death has purpose. That we can live on through our children. Well, given another chance, I know what choice I would make. The fate of these creatures, it reminds me of a story. Does it? There once was a blacksmith whose king commanded him to construct a box that could contain all the evils of the world. With no metal, it holds to power. So the blacksmith used the flame. Wait, uh, is this a story meant to ease my grief? Perhaps it is just a story. A way to pass the time. I appreciate the sentiment, but... Well, your stories... What about my stories? I wouldn't exactly call them a comfort. Fair. Mamir is the better storyteller. Now don't sell yourself short, brother. You've come a long way from the days of laconic fables. It's okay. Finish your story, Kratos. The blacksmith's daughter was the key to unlocking the box. She died trying to protect her from those who would open it. Well, at least it's a relatable story. <laughs> Stories are of no comfort. Take solace in knowing you did what you thought was best for your son's safety. Even these creatures know. There is little choice for a parent. You are not alone. <sighs> I'm not, am I? And now neither are they. Well, I can 
get misty. It's beautiful. Thank you, Kratos. This land sings once more. We've done good here. No rush to leave yet, is there? Who knows what kind of adventures await us in a freshly lit barrens? I must say, I think ah! this is a good team. With my brains, Kratos' is brawn, and my lady's, uh... Wisdom? Magic? Ability to tolerate you for long periods of time? I was going to say brutality. That works. That's odd. The runes are dark. What purpose does all this serve, other than a testament to my brother's vanity? Difficult to say without an inscription. But it looks like the elves built this place together. Light and dark. Which means this would have been their first act of cooperation in generations. A far cry from lasting peace, but perhaps it served as a monument. One that symbolizes the potential for peace. This statue may have survived Freya's absence, but a truce clearly did not. Monuments are useless to those who ignore their message. He didn't create a truce to prophecy alone. His godhood. His very presence is what healed this land and allowed peace to take root. But once he left, he had to have known what would happen. Well, he had good reason to leave. Some jackass convinced his sister to marry a madman. You said monuments are useless. Why restore this one? It was hidden for some time. Perhaps now it can serve as a reminder. Aye. Nothing reminds people of their history like chiseled, well-lit marble. In honor of the Enlightened One, may his gift of light shine eternal. Ah, gift of light. The light from the crystals. It is in the sand now. Would you look at that? Freyr's gift endures after all. Or should I say, his presence? You are not funny. Even when Freyr was actually here, the peace was fragile. Surely a bit of extra light in the desert isn't enough to make it last. Before I met Faye, I could not imagine a life of peace. After her death, in our travels to Jotunheim, I found peace on my own. It remains my responsibility to make it last. Perhaps the elves will find peace again one day, even without Freya's guidance. His presence continues to guide them, whether they realize it or not. Perhaps we can bring these two animals back to Vanaheim, or Midgard even. Specky and Spana could use the company. We have kennels. It would not go well for them. Once a predator becomes accustomed to a land, it is cruel to move them. I suppose you're right. It seems lonely out here. It's peaceful. They have each other. It is enough. You know, Freyr loved to breed Gulan pups in Vanaheim. I wonder if these two are the descendants of the Gulan he brought here long ago. That explains how they got to the desert. Another gift for the Dark Elves. Fury. Oh? Put it on one of my horns. Let's see if I can pull it off. No. That's all my brother's tributes. Would you prefer we hang on to them? Do what you will. If Freyr didn't bother taking them when he left Alfheim, he wouldn't mind us selling them to the dwarves. I thought, Yankee Vita, Helga brought him up. She thinks she's protecting them by hiding all this knowledge away. Our ally wishes to read this journal. We are taking the book.
I'm impressed. Thought you were going to end her. When last we traveled here, after Faye passed, I killed an elf of great importance. The ramifications were dire for his people. I do not wish to make the same mistake twice. I wonder, how'd these two pups end up yoked to the slag? Ever try flying in a sandstorm? I imagine Freyr showed the Dark Elves that Gulon could be trained to pull a plow. They must have found new uses for them once the sandstorm arrived. I imagine they're now bred to aid in traveling the surface. Well, brother, before you see the lad again, might we discuss an approach? He will tell me where he has been. That is my approach. Ah, classic Spartan diplomacy. Wait. Did you say Odin invited him to Asgard, and then he disappeared for two days? Aye, but surely the lad's got more sense than to- Don't underestimate Odin's powers of persuasion. He filled my son's head with lies. Why wouldn't he do the same with yours? Hmm. Tell me where we find these Norns. I discovered some of their threads near the frozen lake. I stashed one for spellcrafting, but we may also use it to find them. Just remember, they really don't want to be found. Well, at least things will be difficult for a change. Midgard, how I've missed the freezing gusts and constant raider attacks. Well, that's because they believe Kratos is responsible for Thimble Winter, and that killing him will end it. Where would they get an idea like that? From me, of course. Of course. Come. Oh. Quiet! She is a friend. Now. Better they get this from you. Once the wolves have the scent of the Norns, we'll just need to follow their lead. Hmm. I will open the gate. <laughs> Stop whining. Their fur is matted. When did you last brush them? They are wolves. And matted fur leads to disease. Take care of them, and they'll take care of you. Brother, what exactly do you intend to ask the Norns? How I may find my son. Nothing more. You don't imagine it's a chance to clear up all this mess about prophecy. Perhaps get a second opinion on your alleged demise. You didn't tell me you had a death prophecy? When Atreus and I reached Jotunheim, we found a hidden mural. The giants, they herself, had foreseen our entire journey long ago. Who we would meet, who we would fight, all of it, as it happened. But you aren't dead. That image was from a time yet to come. I see. You've never struck me as someone who fears death. That's not the problem, is it? No. Death can have me when it earns me. Then maybe it's not the future that bothers you. Faye sent you on your journey, and she made sure you'd see that image at the end of it. And you're still not sure why. I wish to speak of this no further. Well, the Lake of Nine has certainly seen better days. Raiders have made themselves quite at home. Not sure I've been back to these parts since our great battle with Seacrim. She speaks highly of that fight as well. You know of that. She told me all about it when she found me. She believed you could be an ally. Long before I believed it. The Valkyrie Queen. An ally. I'm the Valkyrie Queen. As Sigrun was stubbornly determined to remind me. I should have guessed it was Sigrun helping you recover yourself. She's so loyal. Why? Clever. Oh. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take a love goddess to see where you're coming from. Lemire, have you encountered these Norns? Not personally. Freya's right. They have ways of discouraging visitation. Odin made his share of efforts. Wouldn't talk about what he found. Either he gave up, or he wanted to forget what he saw. Freya, you mind telling us what you experienced when you sought the Norns last time? To be honest, the details are hazy. Like waking up from a dream. <coughs> Mainly, I remember that nothing could be done to change my son's fate. Which only made me more determined to try. 
Brother, what of your story? You faced the fates of your homeland, yeah? The legends I heard about the ghost of Sparta were surely exaggerated. Exaggerated? Oh, not in the brazen bloodshed righteous fury part. The part where it said you traveled back in time itself to win a battle once lost. It strains credulity, obviously. I mean, a rumor about Thor knocking the world serpent back in history from Ragnarok is one thing. It is the truth. The threads of fate span all life and time. The sisters of fate abused their power. When I challenged them, they threatened to undo my existence. So I killed them and turned their power on Zeus. That's the most dangerous and irresponsible thing I've ever heard. These Norns have no such magic, nor does anyone in these realms that I've ever seen. Aye, can you imagine? If it existed, Odin would have it. And if Odin had it, we'd be five shades more fucked than we are already. I would not ask them to change the past, even if they could. I only want information. And that's quite dangerous enough, in my experience. Kratos, tell me more of your homeland. It was violent and cruel. Sounds no different from these lands. It was warmer. Iron peace, not a golden war. Tyr used to talk about how heavy the cost of war was compared to its bounties. He felt like it was his responsibility to avoid it. Kind of still does, in fact. Is that a frozen lightning bolt? My fight with Thor ended there. That's where you landed. No wonder there's bits of Tyr's statue all over the lake. There! I was Seekern when you saw her last. She's still incorporeal, ever since Kratos set her free of her corrupted form. But she hasn't let that stop her from helping any way she can. The truth is, I owe her more than I can repay. I doubt she'd see it that way. When we freed her, she could speak of little else but her reverence for you. Seeing you yourself again would surely be payment enough. How strange. I've never seen that building before. Aye. Very strange indeed. Freya, you mentioned that Thimblewinter had worn down some of Odin's curses, but you still needed help. Was it Sigrun who helped you recover your warrior spirit? Is that how Odin liked to refer to the curse that kept me from defending myself? Oh, I suppose that is where I heard it. Would you like to know how that curse really worked? What it did to me? What it cost me to finally break it? I'm no longer sure. That's correct. Well, Seekrin must have helped find your Valkyrie wings. Were they hidden in the place I get? They were not. But yes, she did. Argued all the while I should let my anger go, but help me just the same. Freya, where is Seekrin now? Impossible to say. She's on a mission spanning the realms in search of our lost sisters. Our hope is if she can bring their incorporeal spirits to Vanaheim, we can find a way to restore them to uncorrupted forms. There's that itchy sound again. Normally, I don't mind ladies whispering in my ear, but this is positively awesome. Anyone ever tell you that you babble when you're terrified? Terrified? I'll have you know I'm at the very most deeply apprehensive. And breaking tension with humor is the sacred duty of a traveling companion. Hey, how very dare you! Babbling! Win minds, not wars. Tyr understood the greatest fight of them all was the battle for people's hearts and minds. Too bad Tyr has no interest in doing either these days. Wish for peace. Be ready for war. Oh, that's astute of the elves. Tyr never sought war, but he knew he had to be ready for it. Aye, best be armed than not. Impressive looking weapon, isn't it? It is big. <laughs> Suckling back to the topic of prophecies brought about by the efforts to avoid them. I think I can recall such a story as you mentioned, brother. A Greek tale for the stage. Rather lurid, but very popular. 
You know the one? Every Greek knows the tragedy of the Theban king. Yeah, one gets around about that sort of thing. Brother, about the oracles of your land, would you say they manipulated events? Did they have an agenda? I do not doubt they held their own interests first, but in my experience, they could be easily fooled by their own prophecies. Would that be a specific experience, brother? Hmm. Once, I sought the Oracle for a means to break my bondage to Ares. One priestess had visions that showed her Olympus would be brought to ruin by the god of war. Therefore she helped me, intending to undermine Ares and protect her realm. She did not foresee that I would kill him and take his office. In the end, I proved her vision of doom correct. So the Oracle herself brought about the very future we hope to avoid. I suppose we're in fine company at that. Defend the peace. Well, I think that's the last of it. Doubtful we'll find any more interesting bits. I always admired the love Tyr inspired. Where I come from, gods of war are not revered in such a way. Not all gods of war are the same, brother. No, they are not. I thought death had cured me of my appetite, but damn if I can't stop thinking about the smell of tear stew. Awakened a fair few culinary cravings, did. Black pudding, haggis and neeps, oh! Porridge and honey. What about you, brother? Any pre-fimble winter foods you're aching for? Olives. The hell's an olive? Something else I recall about that Greek play I mentioned, if you won't take offense at the critique. As a work of performance, it consisted almost entirely of watching people give speeches and receive terrible news. Might have been nice to see more events dramatized instead of described. It is Greek tradition for a story to unfold in a single time and place uninterrupted. It is more clear. If you say so. A net, a uh, lungs. Oh, no, that's rubbish. What? Brock's bloody riddle. What gets bigger the more you take away? I can't let that blue twat beat me. If you are this upset, he already has. Meeting the Lady of the Forge really brought back some memories. I thought it was only in my homeland you'd see such things. Mermaids who forge weapons. Aye. I remember very fondly a late nymph called Nimue. Very talented with a sword. Mumia. I meant that literally. Shame on you. She made the best swords in all the Isles and had big dreams about what she'd do with them one day. I wonder what became of her. The Galahorn. What is it? Where did it come from? It's a very loud horn, and I've not the faintest idea. Mumia. No, truly. No one knows where the Gallahorn originated. Odin just gained possession of it one day. <laughs> Lemire, the large dwarf statue we saw, who does it depict? All these Stonefoot, warden of Spartalfine. He used his wisdom and might to imprison some of the most dangerous creatures in all the realm. Brock's riddle. The answer be nothing. What gets bigger the more you take away? Nothing. Uh, I don't think so, brother. Hmm. I do not like riddles. Brother, you don't like riddles, eh? No. No, oh, you just haven't heard any good ones. Here, I'm tall when I'm young, short when I'm old. What A candle. Yeah. Heard that one before? No. Oh. Well, did you like it? No. Now that you have a weapon to deal with Heimdall, we just need to find a way to get to him. Aye, if that's still the plan. It is. I will protect my son. So, then it seems the original plan to avoid Ragnarok has fallen a bit by the wayside. That is up to Odin. Yes, that's rather what concerns me. Listen, brother. Those things he said to you... His words are nothing. True, though I expect retaliation is no empty threat. We need to think through the ins and outs of it. 
You're getting ahead of yourself. Let's see if Sindri has had any luck. Mumir, what else do you know of the mask? Only that it was the great passion of Odin's life. He journeyed across Adjir's burning ocean into the heart of the silent matron herself to find it. Lost every man in his crew, but to hear him tell it, it was worth all that blood and more. Nussbahn. Feels like I was just here. Something Odin put you up to? Yeah. Company's better this time, though. Mimir. Odin's mask. How do you hear about it in the first place? He said a voice spoke to him one night. Entreated him to collect the mask and control his own fate. I still think it's all a bunch of bollocks. Odin got drunk, convinced himself a wooden mask would solve all his problems, and pranced about the realms until he found a sufficiently mysterious bauble to fit the bill. Mask probably doesn't do anything at all. Yeah, probably. So, how was Asgard? I had a fight with Heimdall in a huge field of mud. It got everywhere. No wonder you got out of there. I brought some back if you want to see it. Get away from me, you reprobate! Now that I've spent time in Asgard, it's strange to imagine Magni and Modi there. Sif raised them both, right? She seems like a good mom. Maybe a little overprotective. A good mother? Not a Sif I knew. In a culture as debaucherous as the Aesir, being a paragon of womanhood meant being a fierce fighter and a fiercer drinker. She and Thor seldom knew a moment's sobriety, whether brutally dealing with their enemies or just as brutally raising those boys. What do you mean? Oh, little brother. I know you didn't have an easy childhood, but you can't fathom how much worse it can get. Old. We will finish later. Namir, you were explaining how bad it got for Magni and Modi being raised by Thor and Sif while they were drinking. I want to understand. Well, imagine learning discipline by having it thrashed into time and again. That was Thor's approach, the same one Odin used on him. Poisonous notion of manhood passed down through generations. A grim inheritance, leaving all of them the poorer. Well, Sif doesn't drink anymore. Neither of them do. I am quietly flabbergasted to hear it. I get the sense it's more recent for him. But I know he loves his daughter. I expect that's the explanation. Let this wait. Stay alert. Come here. You can yell at me. If you want. Believe it. What would that accomplish? Might make you feel better. No. You didn't trust me enough to talk through your worries. That's a wound not easily mended. I'm sorry. You needn't be. The fault is mine. That relic? Do you suppose it's the one we read about? Something to counteract a sleeping curse? Dad, <laughs> am I right in getting the sense you've actually gotten to know Thor's daughter somewhat? Yeah, dude's great. Wants to be a Valkyrie one day. She deserves to be. Of course, I told her all about the Valkyries we faced, but I'm not sure how much she believes me. It didn't feel great when I try to tell her stories about her grandfather, though. Anyone can have a blind spot when it comes to family. Some only learn the truth in the hardest way. Well, that relic certainly did the trick. I somewhat missed fighting trolls, didn't you? Don't forget to grab what they dropped. I bet the dwarves could make some armor out of it. Have you been killing trolls? Odd. Still, I can surely forge something for you out of their remains. They bring stone from a dead troll. Oh, hey, great. You know me and my love of handling the dead. Three legendary weapons. You have a favorite, Father? No. They are tools for specific tasks. A preference would be meaningless. I like the axe. I too like the axe. Lad, I've been trying to envision how Thor and Sif came to be such better parents to Thruv than they were to Magni and Modi. Here's how I imagine it. Sif goes straight and hopes that raising a good daughter will redeem their past failures. Thor struggles. Maybe she gives him an ultimatum after some breaking point or other. Like what he did to Modi, that night he found us. Oh, 
That's a death ah! guess, lad. And if that ultimatum worked, well, good for them. Truly. Mimir, if I met someone I liked, how would I know if they, uh, liked me too? Is there someone? I... no. I was just curious. Actually, doesn't matter. It's... doesn't matter. I can't believe Baldur's Dragon is still here. It looks like it landed only yesterday. Aye, the cold preserved it. You've come quite a way since then, lad. Thanks. Hey, Mimir. Do you ever notice Thor talk to his hammer? Oh, still doing that, is he? Yeah. Is he, like, charming the steel or casting a spell or something? No. Just a weird ah! hulk. Amir, why doesn't Thor look like he did in that statue we saw in the lake? Back when it was still a lake. It did at first. Then Thor saw it. The second sculptor was a great deal more complimentary. I guess that explains why Odin's statue doesn't quite look like him either. Oh, guess what? While Odin was giving me a tour, his ravens took us to Svartalfheim, and I saw Derlin again. He was actually trying to do his job. We pretended not to recognize each other. At least I think he was pretending. The point is, it looked like Odin didn't know anything about Derlin helping us find here. So, Father's new spear, it's made out of a ring? Drop me an eye. Forged by the Hulder brothers as a gift for Odin. How's it work? Every so often, the Drop me drips out identical copies of itself. The Huldras presumably figured that if one golden ring was a good gift, an infinite number of them would earn them a permanent place in Odin's heart. But it didn't. Not even a little. Triss, I saw Durlin again too. After we forged the spear, Odin appeared. He had Durlin with him. Threatening him, as if he knew I would know him. But if Odin knew all along, then while we were pretending not to know each other, he was pretending not to see through us. Man, he really is a good liar. So, lad, uh, it's true who you meant when you asked about Viking. True? No. I mean, I wasn't asking about anyone specific. And, well, Skilder likes through. But she's only interested in becoming a Valkyrie. She's focused, you know? Oh, very well, lad. Very well. Just hope you know if you ever need to review anything we've discussed. <laughs> I know. It's good. I'm fine. Ah! So, brother, how did you manage to kill Garm anyway? We killed him a few times, actually. But it didn't take. And I figured maybe the way to stop a soulless beast was to give it a soul. So I gave it the one I had on me. I beg your pardon? Fenrir, remember the light father saw? The accidental magic I did when Fenrir died? That was part of Fenrir's soul going into my knife. Once I figured that out, I just put Fenrir into Garm. <laughs> Clever one, lad! A gigantic hell beast with the soul of a loyal pup. What, Dave? Brilliant! Did you know Garm? Why was he locked up to begin with? Ah, Hell's Feral Sentinel. But believe it or not, Midgard was once bigger. Until Gar, then just a wee pup, got peckish. He ate Midgard? Only a few mountain ranges. And the fifth season that comes after winter but before spring. And the word for the feeling when you get so hungry, you stop being hungry. You're messing with me. I would never. So, Mimir, how did they capture Garm in the first place? That was Tears doing. He lured the beast somewhere safe and kept it distracted by lending his own arm to be gently chewed. Once the chains were on and the gate to Elheim was open, Garm bit Tears' arm clean off in retribution. But Tears not missing an arm. Well, it grew back, eventually. He is a very resourceful god, after all. Namir, I'm not sure how to ask this. There's stories Odin told me, like how he lost his eye. Where the details are different from stories you've told me. And I trust you, of course, but they don't seem like things you'd have a reason to lie about either. One thing to remember about liars, lad. They lie. 
They do it on principle. No issue too big or too small. They lie about anything they can get away with and some things that they can't just to demonstrate their power over reality. You must always bear that in mind. Ymir, when I was in Asgard, I saw Odin do something to some new Einherjö. He seemed kind of mindless until he cast a spell that restored their identity. Aye, that was his habit, even when they were confined to Valhalla. I think letting them remember themselves was another small way of cheating death any way he could. Though I wouldn't be surprised if with that small gift of autonomy, he also embeds an undying personal loyalty to himself. Brother, I've been meaning to ask. Your homeland. I'd heard the gods there wielded every flavor of power you could imagine. Lightning, fire, the whole lot. As did I, for many years. Oh. Any chance you could recall some of that magic? No. I have tried. Freya said magic is bound to the Earth. When your homeland died, your powers probably went with it. Ah. Uh, well, probably for the best. Let the past stay in the past and all that. Hmm. Just curious, brother. Why don't you like riddles? They are frivolous. They encourage lateral thinking. Listen. There are three doors before you. One contains a pit of spikes, one a dragon, and one a pair of lions that haven't been fed in weeks. Which door do you open? Hmm. The first. A pit of spikes is easily avoided. Ah, you should pick the third, because lions that haven't been fed in weeks would be dead! Eh? Hmm. I like this riddle. So what happened the last time you were in Vanaheim? I still don't know how you got Frey to stop trying to kill you. We traveled to her village to break Odin's spell. Once freed, she accepted that I was not her enemy. You also missed a highly entertaining moment where Brock was lifted ass over face in Freyr's camp. You met Freyr? What's he like? Different from his sister. Lacks her conviction. True. But he's a bit quicker to forgive. And an ineffective leader. But his heart's in the right place. You'll like him, lad. She knew the tears were closed. And there's no reward for closing them, I'm afraid. We expected none. Well, then I wouldn't advise staying. She is a corpse eater, after all. Uh, okay. Yeah. Then let's go. I think he's really forgiving me for shooting him. Trust me, lad. The old swine still carried a grudge. You'd know it. What happened between you two? The usual. Miscommunication, conflicting loyalties, broken promises. Nothing to concern yourself with. I'm not concerned. Just curious. Curiosity's all well and good. But so is privacy, eh? Okay, okay. Point taken. Going for more loot, huh? I saw a forge back at Freyr's camp. Has Brock been helping them out this whole time? Ah, you haven't met Lunda yet. Who's Lunda? An old contemporary of the Huldra brothers. She serves as Freyr's blacksmith, keeping his team armed and outfitted. Oh, another legendary blacksmith? I bet she has some good stories. Take caution, Atreus. What? Why? She is quite... <sighs> friendly. <laughs> oh, nonsense. The lad's far too young for her taste. Uh, <laughs> What? You know, lad, this excursion into Vanaheim means you've now visited each of the Nine Realms. Huh. Guess you're right. Not many mortals can claim such a feat. Not many gods either. Even your father has yet to grace the halls of Asgard. I'm in no hurry to do so. Hildas Vini said Freya and Bigvir were captured. Who's Bigvir? He's a light elf. A former scholar exiled from Alfheim with his wife, Bela. She may be their best warrior. Why was he exiled? You'll have to ask him for the full tale. But I take it that he and Bela's quest to unite their people was frowned upon. Wait, Bela's a dark elf? Yes. Wow. Well, that raises even more questions. Hope he's okay. 
The Aner Yar played a part according to Skull and Hati Shrine. Managed to stuff the moon inside a box, if memory serves. But it didn't say where they took the box. Aye, that's the rub of using prophecy as a map, isn't it? A bit sparse on the details. There's a war camp in the nearby village. A strong fortress to guard their bounty. We will try there first. So besides Hildas Vini and the elves, who else is part of Freyr's? <laughs> Not much army, really. Although Beer Girl was a soldier, <laughs> once walking the path of a traveler. I imagine he's handy with that enormous broken sword of his. A traveler that doesn't want to kill us. That's nice. So, we report back to Hildas Vini. Then what? We came here to help Freya. We will not leave without rescuing her brother and the Light Elf. Okay, but Odin's not gonna stop searching for mask pieces. That is his concern, not ours. Sure, but if that mask offers all the answers... Then it will surely exact a price. Be wary of shortcuts to knowledge. Yes, Father. Those in this realm follow the prophecy of the giants. Atreus believes Ragnarok is inevitable. The Norns were quite clear on the nature of prophecy. They told us the sum of our choices were predictable. But we have changed, haven't we? Perhaps. The Norns said you'd kill Heimdall. But you chose not to walk that path. Back when we first met, I doubt you'd have done the same. And you? Do you still seek Ragnarok? Odin has much to answer for. If Groa's prophecy is correct, perhaps my realm can finally know peace. Perhaps I can know peace. Forgive me for being a head on a belt, but haven't we all just established how prophecy is pure havers? Gods, Mimir. What? The most annoying man alive. Alas, we're neat, Hog. It was in our way. Aye, I don't doubt it. Curious, though. What was she doing here? Odin used roots of the World Tree as part of his spell that kept me from leaving Midgard. Neathhog protects the tree's roots, wherever they are. Ah, I see. Odin used her. And she unwittingly paid the price. Classic Odin. Heimdall is dead. Good. Is it? Look, I don't know from faith, but I know Heimdall was a prize-winning taint stain with the capital stank. If he was gonna hurt your boy, it's a good thing he ain't around no more. The Norns didn't quite see it that way. The opinion of them three shut-in spinsters ain't worth a goat fart in a hurricane. You did what you did. No need to fret about it. Hope you and your loin sprout ain't got any holes where you don't want them. We are fine. Oh, honey, you don't have to worry about him. Gave him a once-over, just as soon as Freyr was patched up and on his way. Did you now? <laughs> More of Helka's tracks. I dare say she's got as skilled a nose for hunting as you, brother. Hers is superior. The eyes can lie. The nose cannot. Does that make you wish you could turn into an animal every once in a while? No. And there she goes. Flair, that's gotta be Birger. She wants us to rescue him. You can head back now, Halka. We'll take it from here. How could Birger have survived a fall like that? Magic, perhaps. Let's make sure to ask once we've extricated him from this situation. Should be easy to find Birger from up here. Why'd everyone sound so scared at this place? And on that note, Dragon! <laughs> Ah! 
Atreus! I'm fine. You? Hmm. Uh, looks to be the ruins of a once thriving Vanier settlement. What happened? I rightly know. More reason to find a way out. That signal. Jigger's alive. Not for long if that dragon has its way. It will not. Do you see what I'm seeing? A lightning bolt. Except it's frozen? Like the one made in my fight with Thor. But why would there be one just like it here in Vanaheim? The Path of Lies. Written by Beergan. Perhaps that's who this fella has it out for. No doubt about it. Just like the frozen lightning bolt in Midgard. Yet I have never been here. Curious. I'm sure Andvari would be happy we killed another one at least. Andvari? The dwarf who put his soul into a ring. That's right. He created the Soul Eaters. Whatever happened to the annoying bugger anyway? I lent him to Sindri and he said he lost him. Uh-huh. Lost him. Wish this one were like the dragons in Midgard. They were nice. They were also intelligent dwarves who had been transformed into dragons. Still. Oh, many thanks. No, thank you. You saved us back on the boat. Right, Father? It was foolish. And appreciated. There's a mystic gateway nearby. But I have no stone for it. We do. I can't believe you survived that fall. How'd you do it? I rolled. <laughs> Talk later. A shame. A river once ran through here, bringing life to all manner of flora and fauna. What became of the river? Odin had something to do with it, didn't he? Aye. Damned it up. Why bother fighting the enemy if you can just get rid of their water source? A drought, and now dragons. This place has really seen better days. Birger. How you feeling? Like I could sleep through Ragnarok. Funny you should say that. No. He has earned his rest. Yes. I think it may be time for this old warrior to finally lay down his sword and find a quiet place to retire. Quiet place, huh? Aren't you gonna miss Freya and his crew? I will miss their companionship, yes. But this is no place to convalesce. Actually, I know somebody else out there who's alone and could use your help. Let's talk later. I would like that. Lunda, people keep telling me Ragnarok is fated to happen. What do you think? You know, a lot of folk told me it was fate. I stopped smithing once I nearly lost my hand. So, nah. Fate can eat my sweet cheeks. I see why you and Brock get along. Oh, you don't see past the tip of your sniffer. I wanted to tell you. I read something in Odin's library about what Gjallarhorn is supposed to do. If blown by a god, it sounds through all the realms and harmonizes the space between them. Blow it somewhere like Tyr's temple, and it would be like opening up all the realm travel towers at once. It's quite a vulnerability. Wonder why he didn't just destroy it. Some artifacts defy destruction. Well, we should make Freya aware of this. Go! Hey, guys. What if I let my hair grow out? You want advice on that? From us? I guess not. <coughs> Atreus. I'm fine, Father. If the sickness is returning... I swallowed a fly. Ah. Uh. Oh, brother. What? I've got an itch on my nose. You do not. I know, it's only in my head. But still, can you give me a scratch? No. It would only itch more later. Ah, you're right. Bloody undeath. So, you fought in a lot of wars, right? You've never had anything like Ragnarok on your side? I have. And the creature does not guarantee our victory. Right. You're quiet. I mean, you're always quiet, but this feels different. I had hoped my days of ceaseless battles were over. I had hoped to never.
to see my son go to war. I keep thinking about what you both said. After what happened to Brock. That there's some things we just can't control. I know you were trying to comfort me. But how do we tell ourselves our fate is ours to make? And then when the worst happens, we say there's nothing we could have done. Some people believe life's easier once you accept your fate. Maybe I finally see their point. Father, I'm worried about Thor. Why? Last time you fought, you couldn't beat him. What happens when we meet him again? What'll be different from last time? Last time, you were not with me. Wow. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speak. The day this valley was destroyed, my spirit, it was torn, split in two. Part of me, it lies out there with my remains. Perhaps if the scroll was full again, it would uncloud my mind. I could find peace. What do you want, spirit? I was... the scroll. There was a message I must deliver. The Acer. And Thor, I, I must remember. The message must be delivered. It was important. My commander is waiting on my word. He's been waiting a while, then. Tell us, what is the last thing you remember? I was seeing red. With anger. And the Aesir. And there were these... red trees. Please, help me regain my memory. Then I can tell you what I know of that day. This Spectre may be able to tell us what happened in this valley, brother. The Leviathan froze that lightning. Do you think Mother was... you know... here? It means nothing. We do not know that Faye was here. True. But that frozen bolt tells an unfinished story. If we want to know what really happened here, we need to know what that spirit remembers. Hmm. Then we go. Turned your scroll, spirit. And I am whole again. Now I can deliver my message. Your commander is long dead. I... Of course. Odin sent Thor to take control of the valley. But I suppose it's too late now. Don't worry. We're handling the Aesir. Now, tell us what you know of that day. I remember walking into a meat hall, and Thor was there. Do you know why he was there? There were whispers he was looking for a Vanir military outpost. I didn't want any trouble, so I got out quick. That's the last I saw of him, but maybe there are others who saw more. I wonder if Thor was meeting someone at the meat hall. Whoa, you think Thor was meeting Mom there? Faye never drank with me, and she would not have with him. Sometimes we never really know the ones we love, brother. I know you see me. I am listening. Five hours to north. Two hours east. I said I would find this valley. A new home after the Aesir destroyed mine. So, what happened? I cannot remember. I know that I wanted a new life. Do you remember seeing anything that could help us find the other half of your hourglass? There were three waterfalls. I remember wishing I could live near them. Another spirit displaced by the Aesir. Odin must have been really mad when Freya left him to do all this. Odin was never going to stop. That's why he sent Thor here. And what of Fey? Did she challenge Thor? Challenge Odin? Who knows? But the truth is waiting for us, brother. Hey. Wait over here! What do you remember of the day you died? Everything is hazy. I remember 
I was nervous. This brooch. I plan to propose to my beloved. Please, I beg you. Restore me. Restore my memory. Then I can tell you. Tell you all I know of that day. Your remains. Where are they? I was looking out upon the valley. Then the ground. It shook. I tried to dodge a pillar as it collapsed. I must not have made it. brought you what you asked. Thank you, my love. She waits for me in full thunder. Now I can ask her to spend eternity with me. How can I repay you? Tell us what you know of that day. I was at the meat hall. Thor was there. He had a strange drinking companion. Some sort of creature, the likes of which I'd never seen. It had this barrel of meat that seemed to never go empty. What were they doing there? Getting blind drunk by the looks of it. They were passing drinks around, reveling. Everyone had a tipple too many. But Thor, he was by far the drunkest of any man there that day. Mumir, what do you make of this? Thor has always loved a strong drink with questionable company. But I've never heard any word of his creature companion. Well, this isn't a lot to go on, I'm afraid. Well, we know one thing. Thor was totally drunk when the valley was destroyed. There's still much we do not know. And whether your mother was involved remains unclear. <gasps> Wait. What is it you want? Are you... A father? Yes. Then you must understand. My son, Miss Tori, it was for him. But now he is gone. That day, so much chaos and death. I was panicked, looking for my son. Please, help reunite me with my son and Folkfanger. We're gonna help him, right? What is the last thing you saw, Spirit? Statues. Two of them, dragons facing away from each other, separated like my sons. This toy, it will bring me back to him. His story is like many in this valley, separated from someone they love by death. We gotta get him back to his son. Agreed. You do? Huh? I assumed you'd say something like, reuniting the dead is pointless. Not this time. Sudden now. Thank you. I can't wait to see his face again. I'll give him this gift and tell him about the brave people who helped me. Now you can help us. What did you see that day? Yes, I remember now. On the day the valley was destroyed, Thor was swinging his hammer wildly through town. Everyone was terrified. Then a fair haired warrior stepped in his path and a fight began. She was a brave woman. This fair-haired warrior must have been Faye, brother. Yeah. Mom stood up to Thor. I'm not sure if Faye had bravery or bravado. Not many live to tell the tale of a fight with Thor. Faye never spoke of fighting him. Everyone has secrets. We do not know for certain this was Faye. Aye. There is only one way to find out, brother. What is it? It is a tale of combat. Of a fair-haired woman doing battle with the most powerful of all gods. What woman? Elaborate. What? Oh, the specifics elude me. I... I had my style me. And... Uh, I was... excited? Yes. About to bury the hatchet with an old friend. <clears throat> but something terrible happened. 
I'm afraid that terrible thing was your demise, my friend. I know there was more. Three parts. I could see all three. Please. Help me make amends with my friend. Help me remember. I've got a good feeling about this guy. I think he knows something about Mother. Or not. Have some faith, brother. Answers could be closer than you think. to drink another day. Well, in Folkweiler at least. Now I can meet my friend and make amends. You owe us a story first. A battle. Unlike anything I've ever seen, I remember a great clash of metal in the sunlight. Thor, he wielded his hammer, but it was matched by a remarkable this axe? Did it belong to a fair-haired warrior? Yes! That's the one! She brandished that axe with exacting precision. Straight. Never has there been a weapon to match Mjolnir. But with that axe and that warrior, Thor was in for the fight of his life. It was Faye who fought Thor in this valley. It was more than just a fight. It sounds like Mom was beating Thor. It seems there is much I never knew about her. And now she is gone. Maybe. But her story here isn't finished. Question first, brother. You wanted to make this valley your home. What stopped you? I remember this valley. It was on the brink of devastation when I found it. Was it a crater like you see now? No, but the town was in shambles. Shattered glass, broken buildings. There was no home to be made here. Did you see what caused the destruction? A battle. Thor and this woman with red hair. They tore through the town. The rage between them was terrifying. Thor was enraged. I'm not surprised. No. The warrior. She was furious and fought like it. Thor was drunk. Sloppy. But she was drunk on something else. Rage. It was out of control. I saw her fury with every swing of her axe. That battle destroyed this land. These stories, I have known Faye's anger, but never to this extent. We hide the parts we're ashamed of, brother. Hmm. Mom must have hated Thor for what he did to the giant. Maybe that's why she did what she did. She took part in the destruction of this valley. That would take a rage I thought her incapable of. Perhaps you and Faye had more in common than you thought? We both had secrets. But that kind of anger... I never saw Faye in that light. Even the brightest among us carry darkness, brother. What did you see in there, brother? One I had never imagined. And what now? There is much to do. Much to rebuild.
would you join me? I will see to it. Together. Lunda also mentioned there's going to be a get-together to honor Brock's memory at Rab's Tavern in Svartalfheim. I'd like to go. Mamir, there's something I wanted to ask you about. Hildesfini told me about your visit to Secure Hell's army, but was reluctant to elaborate when it came to negotiating with Prasfogel. Ah, yes. Well, I can see why he'd hold off on such a subject until he saw if we survived the battle. Mamir, what exactly did you promise the Lars Bird? Oh, nothing too horrifying. It's just that she'd like to retire. Retire? Hell's Eagle wants to retire? Indeed. And don't ask me what she expects to do with her free time. I assure you, there is no reassuring answer. Can she even do that? Not be Hell? Apparently so. She just requires release. Someone else to step in and become Hell, as it were. Not exactly an office many would wish to occupy. Aye. Terrible weather, infinite hours, and the possibility of unleashing terrible mischief on the realms if they're careless. Or worse, if they aren't completely trustworthy. But if she were to leave without a replacement? Complete chaos, yes. Well, I'm sorry I asked. Freya, something is on your mind. What is it? Freya's sword. I'm glad he got it back. Odin stole it? Not quite. It couldn't be stolen. It had to be given freely. Freyr had it forged in his younger days, imbued with its own motives and passion. For centuries, he swore he would only ever set it down in death or upon meeting the love of his life. Both he and the sword were romantics, you see. I wonder if Sindri will ever come back. Can this place ever feel like a home after what happened here? I never thought I'd miss their bickering. But it's really not the same place without those two, is it? We will maintain it until his return. Ah, if I had a stomach, it'd be twisting right now. Odin is gone. There's no remaining threat. No, no. It's from excitement. Hardly any non-giants have gotten the great privilege of visiting the realm of the Jotnar. It's truly an honor to be among a very select few. So this is Jotunheim. As beautiful as the stories. And then some. Penny's here, Finn. Bengaboda. Kratos, Vimir, Freya. It's good to see you. I wish to thank you for creating a path out of Asgard for us. Aye, a true pleasure to meet the lassie who saved our skins. Indeed. Your giant stuff magic is truly a marvel. We were so glad we got there in time. Freya, your brother's sacrifice won't be forgotten. It won't. I will say, you've made quite the impression on our Atreus's heart. Mimir. Oh, like you weren't thinking it, brother. Ahem. You're a cherished ally, Angraboda. I hope we cross paths again. <laughs> I imagine we will. There's lots to do, and I'm just getting started. Hello, Lunda. Hey, you guys. Uh, about your brother. I never got the chance to tell you. I, I know moments like this you're supposed to say sorry and whatnot, but I always known that pretty pretty man had greatness in him that he'd do something amazing one day and i'm just you know i'm proud that now the nine realms know it too i i thank you anytime ma'am <laughs> do you hear that someone's crying sinmara ah sutter's love should we try to tell her what happened? She knows. Freya, 
When Hilda Zvini went to Helheim, how did he not freeze to death? A perk of the Jofer. The boar-shifting warriors of Vanaheim, as wise in statecraft as they are deadly on the battlefield. So they may shift into whatever form they like. Sure. So long as the only two shapes they'd like to shift into are human and boar. You know, back in Jotunheim, I had half a mind to ask Angerboda what exactly her intentions were with the lad. But one look at her and any doubts I had melted away. <laughs> it's a question every parent must grapple with sooner or later. I trusted her with my life. I trust her with my son. You can't argue with that. To Vanaheim, then. Sounded like Lady Sif managed to convince the old boar to shelter the Aesir refugees. It was his idea. Oh? To foster peace among the Vanir and Aesir. That's brilliant. Shifty bastard must be trying to prove he can out-diplomat me. At least he's not convincing her to marry someone, like some other diplomats would. <laughs> A deservedly low blow, your majesty. Anytime. Freya, you spoke of your brother's sword. How did Odin acquire it? I'll answer this one. Odin, uh, disguised himself as the most beautiful person Freya had ever seen. This separated Freya from his sword. <laughs> oh, with embarrassing speed. <laughs> I am glad Freya ultimately retrieved it. Me too. Mir, you may tell a story if you wish. Am I preferable to silence at last? A rare day. I'm touched. But since you mention it, there has been one on my mind of late. It goes back to my earliest days, when I had little more to do than observe the mortals who passed through our forest. One summer, a local laird of renowned eccentricity chose to sequester himself with a small coterie of kinsmen and followers. The aim of their woodland retreat was to achieve enlightenment through study and discipline. They took oaths to brook no distractions until they became wise men. Distractions? Aye. Women. Drink. Mostly women. As you can imagine, things deteriorated quickly. By autumn, tempers were frayed and wisdom remained in short supply. One day, I watched as the laird and his brother took their hunt. There they found, at the banks of a river, a lady as fair as any they'd left behind. She pleads for their assistance, for fear the currents would carry her off if she tried to cross. The laird doesn't miss a beat. He hoists her onto his shoulders, carries her across, sets her down, doffs his cap, and fords back across to his brother, who is dumbfounded, can't even bring himself to speak. The day stretches on, the laird carries on hunting, and his brother quietly gnashes his teeth down to powder. Finally, the dam breaks. Brother, he cries! How could you do it after everything we've sacrificed? How could you break your vow like it was nothing, carrying that lass on your shoulders like you were a Shetland pony? The laird just smiles. Brother, I sent that lass down across the river. Tis you that carries her still. <laughs> oh, I got a chuckle. A rare day indeed. Thor's hammer and his daughter. I'll make you proud, Dad. Well, good for her. Well, how about that? Didn't I tell y'all there'd be something to see? Feels half crazy to say it, but... I got a good feeling about that rude girl. Never minding what family she came from. <laughs> I quite agree. She's an impressive young woman. I thought you might. Why, well, I ain't never seen anyone quite so awestruck as when she laid eyes on you back at the hole. Like, meeting her idol. She was apparently quite eager to learn from all the Valkyries. Now that she has Mjolnir, I expect her next stop will be to begin training with Sigrun. I think Brock and Sindri would be happy knowing that hammer's finally with someone worthy to wield it. And a future Valkyrie, no less. General, Lady Freya, Mimir, my lady. Shield maidens. Blessed Thor, have you found the traitor Gana yet, dear Freya? 
She is no more. <laughs> Told you Freya would wreck that miserable... Did you rip her wings off? Tell me you ripped her wings no, off. No, surely you tore her spine out through her back. Classic finish. It's what I would have done. Freya was swift and just in her final assault. Oh, ladies, if only you could have been there. <laughs> you will tell us the whole story one day. <laughs> it's strange. There are still signs of the World Serpent all over the lake. But we saw him disappear at Ragnarok. That can only mean the legend was true all along. That blow from Thor sent Jormungandr straight back in time. A younger Jormi, fresh from Jotunheim, would grow into the serpent we know. When we first met the snake, you said that he found a trace familiar. Perhaps they met in Jotunheim. Perhaps so, brother. We'll have to ask the lad for that story when we next see him. When Jormungandr attacked Thor in Asgard, it seemed personal somehow. But there's no way they could have met before that, is there? I've been pondering that, and I have a theory. We know the lad spent his time in Jotunheim learning soul magic. Perhaps the serpent figured in. You mean Atreus placed some other giant soul into him? Someone who already hated Thor to begin with? Exactly! Though that doesn't narrow it down much, I grant you. I wonder if Yorm even remembers after all this time who he once was. We're heading back to Charlie? Yes. He's not gonna be very happy with me. No. I was... I have no excuse for neglecting you. I will do my best to earn it. Is someone inside? Yes. Warming up already, isn't it? Birger. Hello. What are you doing here? Keeping warm. Both of us. It is your home, if you wish me to leave. No. It's good that he has someone. Will you stay? There is still much to be done. Then we will wait. And when it is time to rest, I will keep the hearth warm.